present Arthur Lowe, John LeMessurier and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. We know our onions, featuring John Laurie, Arnold Ridley and Ian Lavender with this week's guests Bill Pertwee, Larry Martin and Alan Tilburn. Here is the news and this is John Snag reading it. It is June 1942. The Japanese have shelled Vancouver Island and the Germans have taken to Brook claiming 25,000 prisoners. In short, the war's evil tentacles are spreading further and further across the globe. At Warmington-on-Sea, on the south coast of England, the local home guard have just been issued with a three-inch anti-tank gun of their own and are prepared for anything. Right, that's it, Jock. Now, if I hold the catch back... You put the pins through the towing bar, all right? Oh, right here, Jonesy. There you are, son. Thank you, Jock. Oh, look. Here comes Captain Mannering. It must be nearly time for us to move off. Ah, you've got the Smith anti-tank gun attached to the back of your Van Jones. Well done. I must say, it looks most impressive. Don't you think so? Oh, yes, sir. It's been on the road for almost 30 years now, you know. (laughs) Still as good as new. Mind you, I had to buy a new tyre a couple of years. Not the van, the Smith gun. I see. So sorry, I misconceived you there for a moment. <laughs> I think the gun's a very impressive weapon, sir. When those Nazi paratroopers get a load of this, you won't see their heels for dust. No, they'll probably go straight back up again. <laughs> what do you think, Wilson? Well, yes, it's awfully nice. But do we really have to drag such a great big gun along with us? I mean, it's, it's an awful fag, don't you know? <laughs> An awful fag? We're on active service, Wilson. This gun plays a very important part in the efficiency tests we're going on today. Right, Jones, get the men aboard. I would, sir, like a shot, but Private Walker has the key, and as he is not present, I think he must be elsewhere. (laughs) We'll go and see if he's in the hall. And hurry, it's getting late. Very good, sir. Godfrey? Uh, Yes, sir. Did you get the all-weather cover for the gun made? Oh, yes, sir, I've got it here. My sister Sissy was working at it till midnight. Uh, she made it from an old chair cover. <laughs> Pretty, isn't it? <laughs> this coral chintz wears awfully well, you know. Yes, yes, I'm sure it does. <laughs> Tell me, Godfrey, was the lace frill around the bottom your idea or her? <laughs> oh, oh, that was Sissy's. Uh, she thought it finished it off. Yeah. <laughs> she was right. It's done. <laughs> Wilson, hmm? we can't put that thing on our gun. <laughs> that just looked like a lot of pansies. <laughs> well, I'm proud to give it to you, sir. Mind you, he's quite right. I mean, it is awfully pretty. <laughs> Wouldn't mind so much if it was sort of browns and greens. We could pass it off as camouflage. It's all bright little flowers. <laughs> well, it'll be very useful if you ever want to hide the gun in a herbaceous board. Don't worry. <laughs> Joe, where are you? Mr. Manry wants the key to the van. He's in a hurry to get off. Joe! Where's he got to? Who can that be? Hello, Jack Jones, the butcher. I mean, Corporal Jones. I don't want you. I want Joe Walker. This is Chief Warden Hodges. Well, he's not here. Now, listen, mate. I don't want any excuses. I want my onions. Do you hear me? I want my onions. What are you shouting for? I'm not shouting. I gave Joe Walker 50 quid in once for half a ton of onions. He said he'd bring them round to my shop yesterday. Where are they? Don't ask me. How should I know? Listen, you tell her to bring them round at once. He can't do that. We're going away for the weekend on a home guard efficiency test. Listen, mate. I'm coming straight round there now. And if I don't get my onions, there won't be anything left of him to test. Well, really, Mr. Manning's right. He is uncouth. Hello, Josie. Did you want me? Hurry up. Captain Manning wants to key of the van. Look at the time, Wilson. We'll never get away at this rate. Oh, here they come now, Mr. Manreen. About time as well. Come on, walk up. Unlock the back of the van. Oh, well, uh, it's a bit difficult, you see, sir. Look, Walker, have you got the key or haven't you? Oh, yeah, I've got the key here, but that's not the point, you see. Give it uh, to me. Yeah, but, um... I shall unlock it myself. 
And if you've been up to any monkey business involving our platoon transport, walk up. I shall be down on you like a ton of bricks. Now, Wilson, when I've got these doors open, you can get the men to... Wait a minute. What's all this in the back? They look like onions, sir. I know they're onions. <laughs> Man's half full of them. Walker, what's the meaning of this? Uh, they, don't, they don't belong to me, sir. Uh, I was going to deliver them to a customer. How dare you use the platoon transport for an improper purpose. I'll speak to you later. Come on, Wilson, we must get off. Well, hadn't we better unload the onions first? We haven't got time, but late enough as it is. Right, Jones, get the men aboard. Tell them to climb in on top of the onions. Right, men, at the double, on top of the onions, climb! Hurry up, Jones. Come on, get in the cab. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Ready to move off. Right, right behind you, sir. Uncle Arthur. What is it, Frank? I can't travel on top of those onions. I shall cry my eyes out. (laughs) That was a lambby pamby, Frank. Get aboard. Go on. Oh, all right. I'll tell Mum. Hurry up, Wilson. Here, wait one a minute. Where do you think you're going? Lord, that dreadful Chief Warden fellow. What's the matter with you, Hodges? Where are you going with my onions? I don't know what you're talking about. Come on, Wilson, don't hang about. We don't want to be late. All right, sir. Cheer up, Hodges. Boy! What about my onions? Boy! Right, you haven't heard the end of this mannering. How long have we been sitting in this waiting room, Wilson? Uh, still about half an hour, sir. They're bound to call us into the examination room soon. I hope so. This waiting bout's very bad for the men's morale. Yes. Hi. Goodness sake, stop sniffling, boy. I can't help it, Mr. Mandarin. It's those onions. Do you your handkerchief? Oh, all right. <laughs> Dreadful, isn't it? You know, I, I really don't think we ought to have come on these efficiency tests, you know. It's asking for trouble. Nonsense. Besides, all the other home guard units in our area have been here, so if we funked it, it would have looked as if we hadn't got any confidence in ourselves. Permission to interrupt, sir. Yes, Joan? I have every confidence in ourselves, Captain Manring. I'm very glad to hear it, Jones. And what's more, I have confidence in you, sir, because I know that you have confidence in yourself, because you have confidence in us. And even if you hadn't any confidence in us, you wouldn't show it, and that's what gives me confidence. <laughs> it doesn't give me any confidence. <laughs> That'll do, Fraser. Now, listen, men. If we pass these tests with fine colours, we shall get 12 stars. And I very much want us to be a 12-star platoon, because you know what that means, don't you? Yeah, we get a mention in the AA book. <laughs> Watch it, Walker. <laughs> You're on very thin ice. <laughs> What's that tapping noise? It's Mr. Rogers. He's outside the window. How dare he follow us here? What does the fellow want? Uh, you leave him with me, sir. I- I'll sort him out. Hey, you! What do you want, Rogers? Mr. Rogers to you. And you know perfectly well what I want. I want my onions. Well, I can't come now. I'm mean, just waiting to go into the exam. Look, I'm not hanging about here all day. Hurry up, Walker. Tell him to clear off. He won't budge. Well, close the window and come over here. All right, Mr. Mannering. Now, men, about these tests. The important thing to remember is that we've no idea... Mr. Rogers is still outside the window, sir. Do you want me to have another word with him, Captain Mannering? No, it's all right, Walker. I'll do it. What are you going to say to him, sir? Absolutely nothing. I have no intention of wasting words on the man. I shall merely rap on the window and indicate... But he has to go away. <laughs> there, he's gone now. <laughs> I made it quite clear that it wasn't convenient for us to speak to him now. And he obviously got my meaning. How do you know that, sir? Because he indicated that he would be back at two o'clock. <laughs> Now, as I was saying, we've got no idea what's going to uh, take place in that examination room, but whatever it is, I'm relying on you men 
to keep on our toes. You know, so last week I was having a drink with a sergeant in the Eastbourne uh, Home Guard, and it turned out that his people knew my people years ago. Anyway, he was an awfully nice chap, and he and his friend, uh, Toffee Glossop, you see, but... J- just um, a bit, but, uh, look, huh? but we're not really interested in your social life, Wilson. <laughs> All right, then I won't bother to tell you. <laughs> tell us what? <laughs> well, you see, they'd been on one of these tests. Really? Yeah. Why didn't you say so in the first place? No. Pay attention, everybody. Oh, Pay attention, everybody. Listen to what Sergeant Wilson's friend and Tubby Glossop did. Well, you see, the, <laughs> these chaps uh, I was telling you about were a bit cut up because uh, they had arranged, do you understand, to play golf that weekend. Tell yeah. us about the tests. Oh, the tests, yes, of course, yes, the tests, yes. Well, when you get into the room, they fire all sorts of questions at you. Oh, and another thing, as soon as you get in, they, they uh, search you for weapons. Don't you worry, Mr. Manning. I've come prepared for such an eventual. Joan, yeah. what exactly is that piece of silk you've got there? It's a rumal, sir. Oh, <laughs> terrible weapon. <laughs> terrible, terrible weapon. <laughs> terrible. Yeah, all right, we heard you the first time. <laughs> Jones, what is a rumal? It's a thuggy scarf, sir, used by the thugs in India to strangle their victims. They used to do a lot of strangling in them days. Always strangling they wear, sir. Yes, sir, I don't think we shall need that here. You never know, sir. Now, you see this knot in the end? Well, there should be a silver rupee in there, but I put half a crown in instead. It's just as good. Now, what you do is you creep up behind the victim and you whip the scarf round his neck and the weight of the coin carries it round and round and then you tighten it and his eyes pop out. (laughs) Yes, I'm sure they do. Put it away. Ah, this must be us. <clears throat> Good morning, gentlemen. My name is Captain Ramsey, and I'm in charge of the tests. Good morning, sir. Now, I must warn you before you enter that room that once inside, absolutely anything can happen. Are you prepared for the worst? Yes, sir. We're prepared for the worst. That's just as well. Now, if... <laughs> now, just a minute... What's your name, laddie? Private Pike, sir. What are you crying for, Pike? I'm not crying. Oh, yes, you are. You're a coward, lad. I hate cowards. Actually, it's the onion, sir. (laughs) Rubbish. I don't know, Mannering, one of your men crying and one of them talking rubbish. Not a very good start, is it, Captain? What is it? It's not a very good start. (laughs) All together, the rest of you, what is it? It's not a very good start. Still, I suppose we better carry on. Right in you go at the double. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Come on, Wilson, keep it up. Don't let the side down. Do my best, sir. Left, right, left, right, halt. All right, Sergeant Baxter, search him for weapons. Yes, sir. Now, whilst my sergeant is giving you all the ones over, I want to tell you that during the time you're in this room, you're under battle conditions. Is that understood? Yes, Yes, sir. sir. If you pass this part of the test, you get six stars. Remember, my sergeant and I can be anything. A Gestapo officer, a British naval officer, anything. Right, Baxter. Are they clean? Yes, sir. Nothing. Good. Right. Sit down on the benches facing the blackboard. Move. Uh, Blimey, Joe, for a minute I thought that sergeant was going to comprehend my room, Al. He probably thought it was a pansy handkerchief. (laughs) Now, whether you're an officer, an NCO, or a private, I want you all to be alert and on your toes at all times. What do I want you to be? Alert and on our toes at all times. (laughs) Right, now stand up. Sit down. Too slow. Stand up, sit down. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Excuse me, sir. I think I missed one. Shall I, shall I stand up and sit down again, sir? No, we have no time for that. Just keep sitting. <laughs> now, the first part of this test is for officers and NCOs only. I'll ask three questions, and when they've been answered, I will want the privates to criticize their leaders when I ask for comment. What will you do? We will, we will criticize our leaders. You, Corporal. Yes, sir, yes, sir. When I blow my whistle, I'm a Gestapo officer. What am I? Well, uh, you're, um, you're, uh, you're... Come on, man, come on, man, come on. I'm sorry so you're getting me a bit confused. I'm a Gestapo officer. What am I? You're a Gestapo officer, Poe. 
you were at the start, though, officer, officer. Right now, pay attention, all of you. I'm now going to draw a diagram on the blackboard. Right, Gestapo officer. Let's see if he likes my room around his throat or not. I'm now a Gestapo officer. Are you quite sure, sir? Aye, of course I am. Well, in that case... Why, right, you Nazi swine! Oh, ah, no. ah, gotcha! Gotcha! What are you doing, ah. Sergeant Baxter? <laughs> get him off me! Yes, of course, sir. Oh, control yourself, Jones. Are you mad, Corporal? It's very keen, you know, sir. Raring to go. Aye. Well, perhaps he could start by going back to his place. I've got a queer kind of feeling we're not going to get those 12 stars. <laughs> right, to continue from where we left off. Now, you, Sergeant, hmm? what are you doing in France? I'm not in France. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. You a drop a parachute. I captured you now. I'm interrogating you. All right, if you say so. But, but what do you want to know? You're not supposed to tell me anything. <laughs> Now, what are you doing in France? I don't know. <laughs> you were trying to blow up a munitions factory. All right, I was trying to blow up a munitions factory. So, you admit it? Oh, really, this is absurd. <laughs> I'll show you how absurd it is, Sergeant. I'm now putting matches under your fingernails. Now I'm setting light to them. They're burning dune. Now they've reached your fingers. You're in agony. How do you like that? Well, to be absolutely honest, it's not really bothering me very much. <laughs> you, Private Pike, comment. I think he's been very brave. <laughs> right now, the next question goes to you, Captain. <clears throat> yes, sir. Now then, Captain Mannering, you are in a balloon, travelling over enemy territory with your men here. The balloon is losing height, and you have to push one of them out. Which one would you choose? Ah, oh, that's a tricky one, sir. I think I should call for a volunteer. Ah, uh, you cannot do that. You must make a decision and choose one. Well, I should prefer to throw myself out, but, uh, of course, I'm more valuable, so, uh, <laughs> I'm very much afraid that it would have to be Private Godfrey. Oh, dear. Nothing personal, you understand. <laughs> Blimey, if I was shoved out of a balloon, I'd take it pretty personally. <laughs> so, you would push Private Godfrey out? Yes, sir. Right. You, Private Fraser, comment. It seems sound common sense to me. <laughs> Private Pike, comment. Well, whoever was thrown out, it certainly shouldn't be me. I'm too young to die. I've got my whole life before me. I haven't done anything, no living at all. Well, all the more reason why you should be the one. <laughs> After all, what you've never had, you don't miss. <laughs> Mr. Godfrey's a fine man, Captain Ramsey. And if I was the officer, I couldn't possibly throw him out. I'd order the sergeant to do it. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sergeant. Oh, sir, if the balloon's losing height, all we've got to do is to wait until it reaches the ground, and then Godfrey could step out. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Wilson. Well, don't mention it, my dear fellow. Don't mention it. Yes, well, uh, now that concludes the first part of the efficiency test. We will start the second half in 15 minutes time. Right, gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed your little break and are now ready for the second phase of the test. If you pass this, you get six stars. Uh, Mr. Speak, sir. Yes, Corporal. May I be so forward and presumptuous looking as to ask how many stars we have inquired so far? As I don't wish to depress you, I shall refrain from answering that question. Thank you, sir. That's very thoughtful of you. Now, I asked you to wheel your Smith gun into position here because it's involved in this part of the test. Now, this is what you have to do. Concealed in that copse ahead of us are a body of my men. In ten minutes, I shall blow my whistle, and exactly five minutes later, they will advance. You will then fire three dummy bombs at them, and they will retreat. Have you got that? Yes, sir, that seems perfectly straightforward. There is just one thing, Captain Ramsey. Where are the dummy bombs? Ah... That's the interesting part of the test. They're in a crate 50 yards away. Oh, sort of race, is it? Well, more of an obstacle race, really. You see, the crate with the dummy bombs is over there behind this six-foot-high electric fence. Mm -hmm. Now, on this side of it, there are three empty oil drums, one large one, one medium one, and one small one. Mm -hmm. Just like the three bears. Be quiet, Frank. 
Uh, there are also two builder's planks, an eight-foot ladder, a coil of rope, and some bits of scaffolding. Now, the object of the test is for you to get all your men over the electric fence using only this equipment. If you touch the fence, an alarm will go off, and you have to start again. Any questions? Excuse me, sir. Is it a hypothetical electricified fence or a real electricified fence? <laughs> it's a hypothetical electric fence, but there's a small charge running through it just to give the test a hint of zest. Oh, what fun. <laughs> it won't hurt you, just give you a wee shock. Right, Captain Mannering, Sergeant Baxter and I are going over to our observation box now so we can watch and ensure that you don't take any shortcuts. Come along, Sergeant. Good luck, Manaring. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Pay attention, man. Mm-hmm. Now, this is a tough one, but we can crack it. <laughs> now, I want ideas, thick and fast. Right. <laughs> Wilson? Well, uh, nothing sort of springs to mind. <laughs> Fraser? I was thinking, sir, if I could just... Yes? <laughs> No, it wouldn't have worked. Walker? Oh, I'm not ready yet, Mr. Mannering. Godfrey? Difficult, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> Jones? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a proposal to you. Well done, Jones. What is it? Well, sir, I've been studying this fence, and if you cast your eye over it, you'll see that it is supported on seven posts. Yes, what about it? There are also seven of us, sir. Now, if each one of us was to crouch down by one of the posts... And then on a word of command from yourself, we were all to eave upwards. We could lift the fence over our heads and put it down behind us. <laughs> we would then all be on the other side. <laughs> yes. It's very ingenious, Jones. I don't think it's quite the idea of the test. Well, Pike, have you any suggestions? Well, sir, um, if we had a really big cannon... We could fire the men over the fence one at a time. <laughs> Mind you, we'd need a net on the other side to catch them in. Yes. Now, Pike. Sir? Since we have neither a net or a cannon, and are limited to using the equipment at our disposal, your suggestion is of no practical use whatever. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Manreen. Anyway, I've just thought wouldn't work. Why not, Pikey? Well, when it was time for the last one to be shot over the fence, I mean, there'd be no one left to fire the cannon. <laughs> right, man, let's study the equipment again. For instance, there must be something we can do with those ladders and planks. A spot of decorating, sir. <laughs> I've got an idea, sir. Acrobats. How do you mean, Jones? Well, sir, if we balance one of those planks on a small oil drum, I will stand on one end, and then if Private Walker jumps off the large oil drum onto the other end of the plank... It will levitate me over the wire. Well, you'll break his neck, sir. Yes, you're right, Wilson. I'm sorry, Jones, it's far too dangerous. Let me do it, sir. Let me levitate myself, sir. I won't go up too high, sir. Just enough to clear the fence. I'm very agile, you know, sir. Well, as we don't seem to be able to come up with anything else, all right, Jones. Thank you, sir. Right, Private Fraser, walk up, Pike. Give us a hand and set the stuff up. All, all right, right Jonesy. You know, Wilson... One can only stand back and admire Jones's guts. I shall stand well back, sir. <laughs> In a minute, they may be splattered all over the ground. We're ready, Mr. Manrin. Good luck, Jones. Thank you, sir. Right, Joe, get ready to jump. I hope you know what you're doing, Jonesy. Right, get ready. Jump! Hey, why, see? The plank's broken, sir. I regret to say, sir, I am still unlevitated. Oh. <laughs> All right, now, let's see. What haven't we used yet? Ah, yes, the coil of rope. Oh, I think we ought to keep that in reserve, sir. How do you mean? Well, if we don't manage to get over the ruddy fence, at least we'll be able to hang ourselves. <laughs> I said the whole weekend would finish in disaster. I've got an idea, sir. What is it? Well, sir, uh, Jones's van is only over there. Why don't we just get in it and drive back to Warmington? Don't be ridiculous. I refuse to give in. There goes the whistle, Captain Mannering. We're supposed to have been over the fence and back again by now. I think Uncle Arthur's right. We ought to give in. Wait a minute, Pike. There must be some other way. We must think. Captain Mannering. Yep. It's just occurred to me. This Smith gun is a smooth bore weapon, sir, so we can fire anything from it. Yeah, in that film, Captain Blood with Errol Flynn, they fire grape shot from the cannons. 
That's right. We've got the charges. All we need is some bits of old iron and nuts and bolts. We haven't got any nuts and bolts. Well, we can take some bits off Jonesy's van. How dare you? You're not taking my van to pieces. Uh, Captain Manning, sir, if we fire bits of iron at the people who will attack you, it'll, it'll make holes in them and spoil them. <laughs> yeah, it could kill them and all. Of course it could. The whole idea is absurd. You know, sir, it's just occurred to me, sir, what we need to fire from the gun is something that's hard but not lethal. Well, that's all very well. I haven't got anything like that. Now, let's think. This is all your fault, Walker! Hey, look, Joe. Miss Rogers is back again. Wait a minute. That's it. Onions! 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 Come on, man. Over to the van. Oh, trust Joe Walker to have all these perishing onions loose like this. Rogers! We want those onions. What are you talking about? I pay for these onions, they're mine. We need them urgently. Well, you're not having them. In the name of the king, I demand those onions. <laughs> you can demand as much as you like, mate. You're not having them. We'll buy them from you. You can't. You're not registered with me. Well, you're registered with me. And if you don't sell us those onions, you've had it for kidneys. <laughs> All right, then. Shilling a pound. Shilling a... I sold them to you for fourpence. That's your hard luck, mate. Right, we'll have twenty pounds. Right, it'll cost you a quid. And I want to see the colour of your money before I start weighing them out. How dare you. Wilson? Yes, sir? Give him a pound. <laughs> Hurry up with the ammunition, Pike. Why, why have I got to be the one to shove onions down the barrel? <laughs> no, they make me cry. Oh, get on with it, Pike. Stop moaning. Is that the lot, Wilson? Not quite, sir. Godfrey's coming over with a couple more pounds. Oh, yes. Come on, Godfrey. Run. I, I do want, sir. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Backing out, are you, Mannering? Not even attempting to get over the fence, eh? I shan't even be able to give you one star note. I can assure you, Captain Ramsay, we're not backing out of anything. Excuse me a moment. Range 200 yards, Wilson. What are you talking about, man? You have no ammunition. Your enemy is due in just 30 seconds. Let them do their worst. We have it all in hand. Range 200 yards, sir. Thank you, Wilson. Load the charge. Mr. Manrin, my charge is loaded. Thank you, Jones. Stand by the fire. Standing by, sir. Look, sir. Here they come, the enemy. From behind those bushes over there. Right. Fire! Permission to speak, sir. Yes, Jones? I have fired, sir. <laughs> fire! Go! Oh, look at that! I bet that's got them worried. But I don't understand, Baxter. What are they using for ammunition? Oh, it looks like onions, sir. Onions? Look, Mr. Mannering. The soldiers are running about all over the place. Ha-ha, <laughs> they don't know what's in them. It's hardly surprising, really. They're going back into the bushes. <laughs> Shall we let them have the last slot, sir? No, Jones, no, no, no. I don't think that'll be necessary. We've got them on the run. Well done, men. Well, Captain Ramsay, I think we've achieved the object of the exercise. Captain Mannering, I'd take my hat off to you. That's the best bit of initiative I've seen in this whole war. I'm going to give you 12 stars. Do you hear that, man? We're a 12-star platoon. <laughs> Just a minute. Hodges, where do you think you're going? I'm going to pick up all those onions. Oh, no, you don't. They belong to us. And tonight, men... When we get back, I think we'll all have some nice onion soup. Excuse me, sir. You haven't forgotten that I paid for the onions, have you? Of course I haven't, Wilson. I'll tell you what. Yes, sir? You can make the soup. That episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John the Measure of Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Laurie, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Bill Pertwee, Chief Warden Hodges, Larry Martin, Private Walker, Alan Tilburn, Captain Ramsay, and Michael Middleton as Sergeant Baxter. We Know Our Onions was adapted for radio by Harold Snowden, and Michael Knowles and produced by John Dias.